We'll continue our media availabilities in advance of Sunday's cheese at 355 at the Glen. We're joined now by the driver of the number 19 Stanley Toyota, Carl Edwards. Carl, during the May test, uh, you spoke about how good the racing here traditionally was and what, you know, the challenge the track faced in trying to preserve that uh, through a resurfacing. Uh, having been on the, on the track now for the test and, and a practice session, uh, what are your thoughts and expectations heading into Sunday? Well, it's just um, same as we talked about the test. They did a really good job with the repave, all the curbing and everything. There, there are no, um, you know, there are no problem spots. So um, it has yet to be seen how the, how the tires will really fall off, um, you know, and how the cars will run together. But the, the speeds are fast, and the, um, you know, we didn't have any trouble. So I, I think, um, you know, we'll just go out here and try to qualify well, and, and we'll just see how the race goes. This thing, I mean, you guys have seen tons of races here. These things can uh, go any, any possible way. So we really just don't know what to expect yet. Excellent. We'll open it up for questions for Carnival. If you raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. We'll start with Zach, then we'll come over here to Stan. Zach at the Hensonbury French Touch. Um, your last Xfinity race was here at Watkins Glen, and you got the win. Um, you know, why have you stopped in the Xfinity series? And would you, you know, w do you look at road course racing and having some more experience in the Xfinity series? Would you rather, would you, you know, be interested in going back yeah. anytime? So I ran both series full time for seven years, um, and it got to the point uh, when we were battling for the Cup championship in 2011. I was running off from the Cup car to go run the, uh, the Xfinity race. I thought, man, I really need to focus on, on the cup car. And so that's what I've done. But the road racing is so much fun. That's why we, we came back and did that in the, in the subway car. And, um, yeah, I, I, if they're, I, I don't want to run too many Xfinity races. The cars are different enough now. I feel like it, it, would, it can take away more than, than it can benefit me. But the road courses, I'm, I'm definitely open to. These, these places are really fun. We'll go over here to your right to stand, and we'll go back to Woody in the back. Carl, Stan Creekmore with the Racing Experts. Um, you might not like this question. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but has there ever been a point in your career where you suffered an injury and had to think about s stepping out? And what do you think about what Dale Jr. is going through at this time? Um, I've been pretty fortunate in my career as far as um, you know injuries and everything I can't remember having one that um, that really scared me um, but I, I just I'll say the same thing I said when we you know Dale made his uh, decision to begin with I think that um, you know it takes a lot of guts to be able to do that to be able to say hey I, I really believe that I need to do this and um, I think it speaks to the strength of him as a human being and I think it's a good example to young drivers, like he said today, um, guys that might feel like that, um, you know, they're not at a point in a career where they can actually speak up and say they have a problem. I think it's a, it's a great example of, of doing the right thing. We'll go to the back to Woody and then we'll come up front. Woody came with MRN. Carl, a little off the wall question for you. With the Olympics starting up, I wonder how close attention you pay to that. And uh, if you could pick one Olympic sport you could be good at, what would it be? Uh, it'd be a bobsled for sure. Um, that looks like a lot of fun, uh, but yeah, my my um, my trainer Dean Gallich from Carmichael Training Systems. He has uh, he's down there right now, and he's got some some cyclists that he trains. And I've been kind of talking with him as we've led up to the Olympics, and the you know getting a little bit of that inside scoop to how much pressure there is. I mean, it, this is it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for many of the Olympians, and the mental side of it, and the pressure, and how how much goes into that is I mean that's spectacular to me. It's like um, it's like getting one shot at the Daytona 500 in your, your whole career, and uh, you know, to to make a racing analogy. So for me, it's it's very interesting to watch and to see how everyone responds to that. Uh, I think it'll be a, a really great to watch. We'll come up to your front left, Carl. Uh, since the repave, a lot of drivers use like seams in the track or the cement strips yeah. as uh, breaking points or reference points. And now all those are gone. Uh, just how much? Did the team have to change the car, and how much do you have to change how you drive this track now? So we changed the car a little bit. Um, and then for me as a driver, it did take me a little while. I don't remember all of my old marks. I just know that there's some new ones out there. It took me a little while to, to kind of get my marks right. and to. I ran over the curbs wrong a couple of times. Uh, I found some slick spots on the curbs. and But, yeah, that's, that's fun. I mean, it's kind of fun to show up at a place and have to catalog everything and, and remember where all the speed is. Um, Hopefully I can remember it 
by tomorrow when qualifying happens. But uh, right now, I've got it all in there. We'll stay up front and go to Reed now. Reed Spencer, NASCAR Wire Service. As a, as a former RAF guy, I uh, just wanted to know what your reaction was to Chris Busher's win and, uh, and <laughs> whether you thought that was a pretty neat deal. Yeah, I, th I thought that was really neat. I mean, Bob Osborne and I won I think it was 18 or 19 races together, and we've won there at Pocono. And I talked to Bob last weekend a little bit, um, just called him on Saturday or Sunday and just check in, see how he was doing. And he's, uh, he's just an awesome guy. So I, I'm really happy for Bob, really happy for Chris. He's, uh, he's an amazing driver. Uh, Bob and I talked a while back, and Bob made a specific point, you know, it's Four or five months ago, he said, "Man, he said Chris is so good." He said, "People don't realize how good this this kid is." So um, hopefully, they can get things rolling, get in the points, and uh, you know maybe put something together for the end of the year. We'll go to you right now. Hi, Ed Coons from Speedway Media. I remember back here a few years ago when you ran around in a rental car with uh, Boris Set, I believe. <laughs> What's changed for you since that time? Uh, your confidence compared. Uh, obviously, it's better, but. You know, yeah. Can you describe what it was like that first time coming around here and then uh, uh, compared to now? So a little perspective for you guys. Um, my first time here, I didn't even make it a full lap. I backed the 99 car right into the, um, the wall coming onto the front straightaway, and uh, that was embarrassing. It was really embarrassing. A little later while they were fixing my car, I was talking to Casey Mears, you know, just shooting the breeze. He said, man, you see that idiot out there in that red and white car? He backed it in the first lap. He didn't have the number on it. <laughs> I was like, Casey, that was me. And so... Um, <laughs> So, so to, to come back here after that test, um, I also crashed the uh, 60 car, the Xfinity car, and uh, Brad Parrott was my crew chief, and he wouldn't unload the backup car. He said, we're going to sit for a little while. He's like, at the current rate, <laughs> we're, we're going to be going home in about 30 minutes. We unload it. So um, I was terrible here. And Boris said, help me a ton. He helped me. Um, you know, Jack Roush used to have a, a program. Boris would – he he – call Boris in to go for a day with young guys like like myself who didn't have any road racing experience and I still I talked to Glenn Reen today and I told him hey here's what Boris told me and I kind of go through the list of things you have to you have to do and um, and so yeah from then to now uh, to be fast here to be at the top of the chart for a little while in practice and have a shot at winning these races is a, is a big accomplishment for me. Carl good luck this weekend thanks for coming in. Thanks guys. As we continue our Media availability is in advance of Sunday's cheese at 355 at the Glen. We're joined now by the driver of the number 78 Furniture Road Toyota, Martin Truex Jr., and the pres team president, Furniture Road Racing, Joe Garone. Gentlemen, welcome. Um, some pretty exciting news uh, broke last night um, with your uh, two year agreement to continue to drive the number 78 Martin. Uh, and obviously, with uh, Bass Pro Shops and Tracker Boats extending their primary sponsorship or expanding their primary sponsorship on the number 78 next year, congratulations. Uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, the deal. Well, I think everybody knows the details, but uh, uh, obviously, really excited to continue this relationship. It's uh, you know the last the last year and a half uh, with this team has been amazing, and uh, just looking forward to continuing that momentum and. Um, building upon our success. So it's, uh, you know, Final Four last year was a big deal for us and uh, looking forward to hopefully getting back here this year and doing even better. And just, uh, you know, again, continue to build on the success we've, we've grown into as a, gr as a group. Um, I think we've got, uh, you know, the best team in the, in the garage without a doubt, in my opinion, and uh, just looking forward to, you know, keeping that together and uh, hopefully, you know, doing bigger and better things as we go forward. Joe, talk a little bit about the importance of, of continuity as you continue to seek that championship. Obviously, a great year last year, off to a solid start this year, headed to the chase. But talk a little bit about the importance of continuity in that entire equation. Yeah, and, that, and that's what's great about this is uh, we've got history now and switching over to Toyota. Uh, coming into this year was, was a big step, and, and now signing up here for a couple more years is going to give us a few more years of focus and continue building this program. Excellent. Before I open up to questions, Martin, uh, specific to this track, obviously you feel like this is a race uh, here last year that, that you should have won. Um, what are your thoughts after the first practice session with the new surface and heading into Sunday's race? Definitely pleased with how the day's gone so far. Uh, we came up here and tested uh, two weeks ago and it was definitely a good thing we did because we weren't very good. We learned a lot and uh, we learned a lot of what not to do and so uh, 
it was cool to come back here today. The guys did a good job getting the car prepared and, and coming up with some new things and some new ideas, and uh, it's, it's felt really good today. So the track is um, is definitely a lot more challenging with the new pa new pavement. It's really, really fast. Obviously, the tires just seem to get faster and faster as we run on them, and each time we go in and out of the garage, it seems to be a little quicker. But uh, definitely really fast around here and, uh, and having a lot of fun so far today. We'll open up the questions now. If you'll raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. We'll start right up front here with Jim Utter. Jim Utter, motorsport.com. For Martin, uh, I'm not sure, I don't know what you thought was possible when you first arrived at Furniture Row Racing, but what it ha has it been like to be a, not only a part of an organization that has grown uh, while you've been there, but has also provided you probably your best success of your career? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think when I first went there, I was like, okay, you know, this is a, a pretty good option. <laughs> it's my only option, but it's a pretty good one. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, we kind of got brought together by fate, really. And uh, it's interesting that um, that it worked out that way. But obviously, I'm very thankful. Uh, Barney has, has continued to deliver, continued to give us the tools that we need to, to be successful. Um, and, and honestly, it's just been... Uh, I feel like a, a continuing trend of getting better and better and better. And I, I honestly, I mean, I think we're one of the best teams in the garage. I feel that way. Um, you know, certainly we've had the speed consistently this year to to be considered one of those guys. And honestly, I still feel like we're growing. I still feel like we're learning each other and getting better and learning new things. And um, so to think that it it all came together the way it did is is you know it's kind of weird, but it's uh, it's definitely something I'm really thankful for. We'll stay up front here to Lee, and then we'll go. Lee Spencer Motorsport.com. Um, What's the smirk for? <laughs> it's like. Sorry, I was uh, I was replying to somebody. Um, anyway, when, when you you talk about that deal though, and where you are now, and with the equipment that you have, can you imagine racing anywhere else? Uh, I mean, no. even what you want to with the Gibbs cars being where they are. I mean, honestly, no. I mean, this is, you know, I, and as we went through this process in the last, you know, three weeks or a month, it's, you know, I've worked, you know, I've been in the series 10 years, and it's taken me that long to get here to where I want to be. I, I've put a lot of effort in. I've busted my butt to get to this, you know, in this position where I can win races consistently and, and you know, be a championship contender. So, yeah, I mean, to throw that away would obviously be silly unless it was, you know, something that you just couldn't do for some crazy reason. But I think that, uh, you know, we, we were able to work everything out, and um, I couldn't be happier, obviously, to, to be working, you know, with these guys. And, you know, Barney's been a great guy to, to work for. He's such a such an honest guy, and he just he, he shoots you straight. He tells you the truth. He takes care of his guys like they're his family, and uh, that means a lot to me, and it, and it, and it you know, makes us all do our jobs better. We'll stay up here in the front left, and then we'll work our way to the right. Um, also for Martin, uh, how how drastic were the changes you had to make to the car from 15 to 16, and how much did you have to change driving this place? Um, it's it's not as different as you would think setup wise. Um, you know, I thought when we tested here, we were quite a bit different than the things that we'd run in the past. And then it was, you know, we weren't very good. And we kind of, we changed a lot of stuff, but we changed a lot of little things. It wasn't like, uh, you know, complete 180 on, on your theory of this place. I mean, it's still the same racetrack, right? The corners are still all the same. You still have the same challenges. You know, the uphill parts, the curves are, are similar to what they were. So it's not changed a lot, but the pavement's the biggest thing. And obviously the tires, uh, the tires are the biggest difference from what we used to run here and now they're you know they're really hard they don't wear out which is you know typical repave whether it's an oval or a road course and and so uh you know you just you, you don't really change tires or wear tires out you just keep running on them and uh and, and they get faster and faster and faster so i think it's really challenging to just to figure out where your car is if you you know because at some point in the race you have to put tires on so that's a big challenge but uh We'll just see, see where it goes. But it's definitely the same racetrack. You just have to drive it a little different because you're going faster in each corner than you used to. We'll go to your right to Claire B. Lang, and then we'll go to Chris and then Woody in the back. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Joe, 
Uh, I remember asking you weeks ago, and you, your eyes said it. You were like, we are going to get Martin Truex Jr., and he is going to be with our team. And we, you were very, very clear and very persistent in it. Can you explain the confidence in the fact that, that he was going to race for you and that you wanted him? And on your side of it, Martin, that, uh, that you knew other people probably would be interested in you and uh, the interest of staying there knowing they wanted you so badly. Yeah, well, uh, to start with, uh, a few weeks ago when you asked me that, uh, when you have a driver look at you and talk to you and tell you that we can win races, win championships with this race team, that pretty much says it all. You know, we want to be together. We want to accomplish those goals. And you don't get that opportunity. You can spend a whole career in this series and not be in that environment. And you just you got to capitalize on it while you can, and that's what we're doing. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's, you know, what we've talked about through the whole, again, through the whole process was how can we, you know, make this thing work and keep it going just so we can, you know, just see where it takes us. I mean, it's been, uh, it's been such a great, you know, like I said, the last couple of years have been so good. It's hard to, you know, not, not see it through and, and get to the end of the road and see where we end up. So, you know, just, uh, just proud of everybody that that's, you know, stood behind me and, you know, especially in 14 when we didn't run so well and, and, you know, we were able to turn it around and get it going. And now it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, paying off for all of us. So just try to keep this momentum going and keep building on our success and uh, hopefully have uh, more big days ahead. We'll go to Chris and then Woody. Chris Knight, CatchFans.com. Martin, how important was it for your relationship with Bash Pro Shops to continue with the new contract, upping their races from this season to the next couple of years? Well, it was a huge part of it, obviously. We're really excited about that. Uh, I know Johnny's uh, really looking forward to next year, and, and we've had so much fun. Uh, with him over the years, he's been such a big part of my career. Um, you know, starting out in the Bush Series with us back in uh, in '05. So, I owe a lot to John. Uh, he's he's really helped you know keep my career going at times. Um, he helped start it in the beginning, so he's been a big part of that. And uh, I couldn't be more thankful to to have Bass Pro Shops on our car. And uh, it's 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 obviously who I who I am. You know, I'm a, I think I'm a good representative of their brand and what they do. I mean, that's that's the guy I am. So. Uh, it's just been a good relationship all around, and, and honestly, without John's commitment, this deal wouldn't have came together. So I uh, really do owe a lot to him, and uh, glad we're able to make it all work. Woody, Woody, Woody to Martin, in front to Brant. In the middle of – Martin, just want to go off the beaten path a little bit and ask with the Olympics starting up this weekend if you uh, are into that type of stuff, and if you could pick one Olympic sport to be good at, what would it be? <laughs> I've been asked that. Uh, we did a big video thing on that a while back. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not uh, – you know, much of an athlete when it comes to Olympic type sports. You know, I played football and baseball back, you know, when I was younger, but, you know, swimming and all the things they do, I've never really had an interest in. But there is one sport, Olympic sport, that most people don't even know exists that I'd probably be pretty good at, and that's archery. So that would be my, uh, my Olympic pick. We'll go up front here to Brant. Brant James, USA Today Sports for Joe. It is adding a car the next natural evolution for the team and what's the uh what's the timeline on doing that if so it's certainly a part of it for the growth of the team you know it's it's been over this journey it's we started off and barney his companies have funded our car all along and are still there but uh bass pro shops really coming on board this uh just this last year has really opened up a door for other sponsorships and it's kind of settled us to where we feel you know, we're getting strong enough now to support a second effort, and it's no secret we've been working on that, uh, and, and we'll see where that takes us. 17 is still the, the goal, the plan, the hope? If we can get it all pulled together, it'll be 17, yep. Yeah. And we'll finish up over here to the right with Stan. Stan Creekman with the Racing Experts. Joe, a little bit different angle to that question is because of the performance of this team this year, because of the determination of your driver the, and the thoughts that he can win the championship, is there a lot less pressure to have a second team? Because that can be a struggle. You know, that's, that's a good point. Um, and we've considered that, but with the support that we have right now from Toyota and with Gibbs, the team is just really strong. And, you know, you want to go into something like that where when, when you're on, your, on the high spot and, and you're, you have all your strength and everything's hitting on all eight cylinders, and we just feel like that's right now would be a really good time for that. And 
I think, you know, if we can get it pulled together, we'll be very successful at it. Gentlemen, thank you for coming in this afternoon. Congratulations and have a great weekend. Thank you. Appreciate thank you, everybody.